Peace, blessings, and love to you and your families. I mean, how we're blessed to send here as always. So, you might hear some noise in the background because they're doing some construction outside. The name of this video is going to be Egypt Rises Like the Nile. And we're going to go over that through the spirit of the Most High Yahweh. So let's start off in Jeremiah chapter 46 verse 7. Who is this that rises like the Nile? Like rivers of surging waters. So let's go ahead and take a look at that word surge, right? Surging or surge. Basically, it's the action of a crowd or a natural force that moves suddenly and powerfully forward or upward. So keep that in mind. And as we know through the Spirit of the Most High, water is another reference for wisdom, right? The thing that nourishes our mind, that gives us our fruitful thoughts. And so the Most High Yahweh is saying that there is this philosophy that rises up okay once more because it was uh popular at one time and it became destroyed and it got destroyed by the most high but now it's saying that this philosophy this wisdom these waters are rising up again so the next scripture says egypt rises like the nile like rivers of surging waters she says, I will rise and cover the earth. I will destroy cities and their people. You see that? Because, as we know, right? The Most High Yahweh says that His words are going to basically cover the earth as the waters cover the seas. And so Egypt now is saying that she's going to rise up. Right? That's what it says. She says. Keep this in mind. She Another reference to wisdom, right? Because as we know, wisdom is referred to as a woman. So this wisdom, this philosophy, is trying to rise up against the Most High God, Yahweh. And as we know, ancient Egypt is destroyed. I mean, the Most High Yahweh left that place desolate. Do you think he did that for no reason? The, of course the Most High Yahweh destroyed Egypt and left it desolate left it so that nothing may grow for a reason you think the most high Yahweh scattered the Egyptians amongst nations that they don't know for no reason you see these things I bring out in my videos through the spirit of Yahweh because the people are never gonna learn their true history they're not gonna learn that in school they're not going to learn that from anybody else. Some people may take it offensive. Some people may say, oh, well, this brother has a problem with, you know, certain people. But it's not like that. I must bring out the truth through the spirit of the Most High. You see, the Most High, Yahweh, was the only one that's going to show you what truly happened to your people. Just like he is the only one that shows us what happened to our people. And so his words tells us exactly what happened. The Egyptians got destroyed. Why? Well, because of their philosophy, which in the latter end, which is talking about now, and these days, was going to try to rise up again, as it did once in the past. And see that? That's what's going on today. And if I'm lying, then how come the back of the U.S. dollar bill has a pyramid, right? The pyramids, which was also in Egypt, right? So when the Hebrews came to America, what did they do? They started forming tribes known as the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Incas. And what did they do? They started to build pyramids. Where do you think they got that knowledge from? From Egypt. Because why? Because they were the slaves of Egypt who came here to America and started building those pyramids. And started sacrificing to demon gods. Chopping the people's heads off. Opening up their chests and taking their hearts out. Was not that true? The Mayans, the Incas, they all did this. The Aztecs. So this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh destroyed Egypt. Destroyed their people. Their nation. Because in these days, Egypt once more was going to try to rise again. You see? These Americans. These Roman Greeks. 
who turned Americans, they stole the philosophy of Egypt, then they started calling their worship a myth. This is how you got Greek mythology. After they stole the religions of the Egyptians, and so let's read this in Isaiah 19 and 18 so we can understand why it says, in that day five cities in Egypt. It's not talking about ancient Egypt, it's talking about this Egypt. The second Egypt is America, remember that. So it says, in that day five cities in Egypt will speak the language of Canaan and swear allegiance to Yahweh Almighty. One of them will be called the city of the sun. And as we brought out in the past and previous videos, we'll go ahead and bring this out again for those who may be new to this, those who are probably new to the channel. And again, it's always good to bring out, you know, scriptures that we have talked about in previous videos because we must, you know, refresh our minds. We must always remember that this is the true meaning. It's not what your pastor, your elder taught you. It's what the Most High Howard is revealing to us all now. And so we're going to find out the language of Canaan. So it says, He then brought me to the entrance of the north gate of the house of Yahweh, and I saw a woman sitting there, mourning the god Tammuz. Okay, so this is the language of Canaan, which we read about in Isaiah 19 and 18. Where it says, the five cities in Egypt will speak the language of Canaan and swear allegiance to Yahweh Almighty. What is the language of Canaan? The Jesus Christos, right? This Virgin Mary. So you have to understand why it's called the language of Canaan. It's called the language of Canaan because before he became Jesus Christos, before he became Jesus Christ, he was known as Tammuz. Before his mother became Virgin Mary. She was known as Sibiramesis. Do you see that? Right? And so the city of the sun are all of those who are awoken. Those who have come out of that philosophy. You see that? Let's go ahead and bring out Numbers chapter 21 verse 8. Yahweh said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. You see, so the people who are worshiping, you know, this demon God, the people who do not realize that what they're doing is wrong, they are bitten, right? And what does it say about the people who are drunk on a certain philosophy that is not of the Most High? What does it, what does it say when you are bitten by a serpent? Proverbs 23 and 29. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine. See that? Who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it is red. When it sparkles in the cup. When it goes down smoothly. You see that? Because the Roman Catholic Church is right. They all like to dress in red. They all like to give you your communion, right? They want you to drink this red wine when it sparkles in that cup, when it goes down smoothly. And so the people think that they're doing the right thing. Oh, they're my communion, you know, I'm holy. I'm sacred to God. Are you sure about that? Well, the next verse here says, in the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Furthermore, it says your eyes will see strange sights and your mind will imagine confusing things see that your eyes are seeing strange sights just as you not knowing that what you're worshiping is also the original so-called god of egypt which is called tammuz you see that which people worship back then just as they worship today a false savior who died on the cross for the people that's the reason why that cross is in the shape of a t Right? Tammuz. Putting it in your face. Plain. Okay? Hidden in plain sight. That's the reason why the scripture says your eyes will see strange sights. You can't even see the things that's being revealed right in your face. They're throwing it out in your face. They're doing it symbolically. Okay? And you can't get it. Because why? Because you're drunk off that red wine. You're drunk off the philosophy of America. Their religions. Their customs. You see that? 
So that's the reason why your mind will imagine confusing things, right? You are imagining that you're going to live a thousand years with your Lord and Savior in another realm, okay? Because why? Because you're drunk off that wine. But see, us who serve the Most High Yahweh, we know what is right. The words of the Most High Yahweh are always on our minds, okay? And yeah, this video here is going to have a lot to say. Furthermore, now in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 29, it says, You will be ashamed because of the sacred oaks in which you have delighted. You will be disgraced because of the gardens that you have chosen. You see, these people who want to continue to trust in idols, right? These people who want to continue to go to church, they want to believe a man's, you know, word over the most highest word. Well, this is the reason why it says this here. In Isaiah 42 and 17. But those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are our gods, will be turned back in utter shame. And see that? Your so-called God, he cannot save you from these times and in these days. Because you wait and see what the Most High Yahweh will have in store for all you people out there that want to go ahead and disobey. You see, these are the days of judgment, the days of punishment that the Most High Yahweh have been saying that he would do. The same days that you read about that was going to happen, the time of trouble, right? The time where the Most High Yahweh will put in Egypt a spirit of dizziness and it will make them slumber in all they do. We're going to go back to Isaiah this is Isaiah chapter 1 verse 30 It says you will be like an oak with fading leaves Like a garden without water Why? Because that's how Egypt is represented The Most High destroyed Egypt Nothing grows there You see that? It's like a garden without water Their pyramids are still there Their little structures right? Their little hieroglyphics inside the tombs and all that It's still there right? A lot of people go there It's a tourist attraction site but what? It has no water in it. You see that? You see how the Most High Yahweh says that he devoured Egypt, right? All of its philosophy. But here we go today. Egypt tried to rise like the Nile. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2. This is what it says about the people who awake from the madness. You see the people who let go of this Egyptian Greek custom, right? This is what it says in Isaiah 9 and 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. What light is that? That's the light that's being shown to you now through the spirit of Yahweh. The light that will make you come out of that darkness. It says, on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And look what it says in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. Why is thick darkness over the peoples? Because they are like sheep headed to the slaughter. They are like sheep headed to the slaughter. As we talked about in the previous video, the Most High Yahweh says, There seems a way to be right in the eyes of men. You see, in the eyes of men, people think going to church. They think, you know, worshipping this God that they call Jesus Christos or whatever they call their so-called God, right? They think that's the right way. They think that's the way that you're going to be saved. But the Most High Yahweh says that in the end, it leads to death. So this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that the people, they're walking in darkness, you know. The people, they are like sheep headed to the slaughter, believing the lies of their government, believing the lies of this thing that they call religion, okay. And so, remember, ancient Egypt got destroyed. This is why the Most High Yahweh says that you will be, right, you will be like a tree with no water. This is why the Most High Yahweh says, Cursed is the one who trusts in men, right? And then you know the rest. And now, let's read Ezekiel 29 and 16 to show you the desolation of Egypt. Egypt will no longer be a source of confidence. You see that? You see that? Egypt will no longer be a source of confidence for the people of Yasharal, but will be a reminder of their sin in turning to her for help. See? And turning to her for help because we're gonna go over the story of Rahab I know a lot of people may think that you know 
that's a physical story but through the spirit of the most high Yahweh, Yahweh my God has shown me that it's more of a spiritual thing than it being physical we'll go ahead and show you so again the most high Yahweh says that he destroyed Egypt so that his people may know that it will never be a source of confidence for them ever again right and as we've seen Egypt is desolate today okay so the words of the most high don't lie people do Ezekiel 32 and 18 son of men well for the hordes of Egypt and consign you see this here consign to the earth below because she's trying to rise up again but we're gonna put her back in her place and consign to the earth below both her and the daughters of mighty nations along with those who go down to the pit so you gotta you gotta understand that these people right who are you know Egyptian Christians these people who are into this Greek Egyptian philosophy right a so-called reborn savior who dies and comes back so anyways they're all worshiping the gods of the dead this is the reason why they are considered to be in the realm of the dead when you read about it in the scriptures okay right so let's go ahead and read about Egypt say to them are you more favored than others go down and be laid among the uncircumcised all right Egypt what are you doing trying to rise up like the Nile do you forget look what it says they will fall among those killed by the sword. The sword is drawn. And these times and in these days, let her be dragged off with all her hordes. See that? With all her hordes. So again, you know, like the scripture said in Jeremiah, in the beginning of this video, Egypt rises like the Nile, like surging waters. You see? Because this America here, this Egypt, which is called America, has all these different nations that come here to spread their philosophy their wisdom right their religion their politicians you know their garbage and so this is why the most high Yahweh says that egypt and all its hordes will be dragged off once again okay this is why the most high Yahweh says in the scriptures once more i will astound these people with wonder upon wonder because the first time he did it was in ancient Egypt. And now, once more, he will astound you again. The next verse says, From within, you see that? From within the realm of the dead, the mighty leaders will say of Egypt and all her allies, they have come down and they lie with the uncircumcised, with those killed by the sword. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 18 your covenant with death will be annulled you see that because why because the wicked right these evildoers you see you got to understand something here these oppressors know what they're doing they're evil that's why the most high how you know pulls out their card all the time so anyways they know that the most high how destroyed egypt they know the most high how you know was very furious with egypt back then because of what they did to his people because you know how they treated his people because of how they try to make his people worship their so-called gods so make a long story short these oppressors these evildoers the people who rule over us today right they want to bring up this philosophy here to anger god to try to trap his people once more again because they consider us to be their slaves right and they are supposed to be the so-called modern day pharaohs you see that so this is why the most high says that this covenant with death because egypt is dead all right its philosophies are over you understand that the tamus worship and all of that the most high destroyed all of that so here goes these people trying to make an agreement with the dead but the most high Yahweh says your agreement with the realm of the dead will not stand when the overwhelming scourge sweeps by you will be beaten down by it 